All right. Is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes from August 22nd? Still I move to accept the oh, meeting. You still, you're right. Yes. We could do it just for fun. One, two, one, four. We have, we need six. We need six. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Tori, you, one thing you probably weren't able to hear is we need six people physically. I, I had asked Kate, I was going to try to sneak in, but I, I've got something I've got to do in the middle of this, <laughs> but I will try hard not to have to be virtual so that we can meet quorum. And we change that rule ourselves. I don't For our know. committee, not without a quorum. <laughs> were, weren't, you, were, were, weren't you thinking of Reducing the denominator when yes during the summer when the Echo students aren't here so that it's that's a question we have in with legal to see mm -hmm. if we can do that with our rules if it has to be in the ordinance or in our rules and I I'm hopeful we can do it in our rules that's right but I think we would need at least the existing forum people to do it. it that would make sense all right good idea though <laughs> so. We're not going to adopt the meeting minutes, but were there any changes that anyone saw that needed to be made? All right. Good so, minutes. And is there a preference of what we go to next? I think that the guidelines criteria is very quick and is useful for the Item six, which, which is probably the one that would take the most time. Yeah. Would you like to speak to it, Bill? Yeah. I, I don't know if you can bring up that this just the one-page spreadsheet that I sent, because people haven't seen that. Otherwise, the um, guidelines and criteria are exactly what we voted on at the last meeting, except the date has changed, and it no longer says draft. Yeah, this this is new. Let me make it a little bigger. So this is something based on the guidelines that we voted on as a, a kind of a screening tool for the CIP for projects that we think are related to sustainability. So it, it lays out a way of looking at projects when it's applicable to say, does the project consider sustainability? And... In the guidelines, we define sustainability as involving a balance between economy, environment, and social fairness. So you see those in columns D, E, and F, and considering a balance among those. And looking at the criteria for the CIP, currently, there's a very clear one about economic development. And if we're talking about a sustainability um, screening or value added coming from this committee for CIP projects or for other things that we've considered using the guidelines for, uh, this would be one way of looking at some of the proposed projects. And uh, so it's just basically a screening tool. And uh, it begins just with the name of the project. So this would be for the CIP. Uh, what the reference number is to the CAP so in the column C, is there a related uh, CAP recommended action? So if you see the um, list that Effie and I put together that, that Kate sent out, we reference the CAP recommended actions. And then in the sort of bullet points that I put for the transportation ones that I reviewed, I tried to touch on those three E's. So this is just a kind of a, a tool to be used if it's useful. And it's um, kind of a of a boiled down version of the guidelines. So I don't know what thoughts are on that. It's just a resource to be used as useful. And the numbers, those are coming from the cap. You're not creating numbers. Uh, the numbers that say four, three, two, those are just samples. So I just put in example project cap number XX zero. Maybe it's strong on economic benefits. Uh, maybe touches briefly on environmental benefits and doesn't talk in much detail about equity and is not particularly geared toward equity. Let's say a, a bike path, for example, that was targeted 
to lower income neighborhoods or affordable housing might get a, a five under equity. Uh, if it um, was intended to reduce automobile use, uh, let's say a public transit or a, a, um, a, a, a bike path, then that might get a, a, high, a high number for those. So those are just placeholders. And just the the idea that it also sort of wrestles with trade-offs would be a kind of a bonus one. That's the column, column G, because the, I think the key to sustainability is recognizing that these things all have to be considered at the same time, balanced and traded off. Yes. Uh, when do you? I mean, obviously. Tonight, I know that's a focus of what we're doing yeah. to look at the CIP and the cap and how they connect. But beyond that, who and when do you see this getting for, for this? I yeah, think, I think that's a that's an open question. But if this is uh, a companion to the guidelines, and in the guidelines we talk quite a bit about all the different ways that the guidelines could be used. Let's say, for example, uh, if there's a discussion about. Um, uh, solar panels in the historic district, just to pick one. As part of that discussion, if we wanted to introduce a sustainability consideration, this might be a useful tool just for thinking about it. So I think this table is really intended really for this committee to use in thinking about things. Um, let's say if we were planning a community engagement meeting, we'd do this. Or if there was a, a new plan, like a, a cap, you know, an update to the cap or um, the market square vision plan, we, we would want to try to encourage uh, thinking about sustainability just as the value added from this committee. So it's not just a question about, well, we think it's a good project or we think it's a bad project. It's a way of communicating how the sustainability committee approaches a broad range of things that could come through the city, open-ended really. Two things. One, just a technical thing. Uh, I'm assuming it's a one to five scale. Do you yeah. Have, are you, is that any place on yeah, the document? Yeah. If you look, uh, Kate, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's a sort of foot footnotes down there. Yeah. So the first column, uh, enter cap action number, and then first star. Uh, yeah. So the three stars score one to five, low to high. That was my assumption. Yeah. Second, uh, in response, just I think you have a really good point, and I'm thinking, and I'd like to get this in the notes, is that if we use this tonight and we find it useful, when we do state of the city presentation from uh, our committee, I would like to consider saying, here's where we came up with these recommendations. So we're introducing this criteria for other people who might think, oh, that's a good idea, and it could be adopted if we use it and find it practical. So this, for example, could be a reference, let's say if we wanted to propose a sustainability criterion for a future CIP, uh, and when we get to the discussion of the CIP, I suggested having a greenhouse gas reduction criterion as, as a possible uh, criteria, criterion for the CIP. Uh, the benefit I see to this, actually, I think it is a really great idea. Uh, a benefit I see is not only we are seeing the balance between the categories for each row, each project, but over time as that list of projects grows, you would see the balance of your holistic um, history. Yeah. It Bert talks about a state of the city type of presentation at some point on sustainability. And this would be, let's say, a, a useful tool for that if we wanted to talk about, well, how did the committee add value to policies or regulations or new planning initiatives or to CIP types of investments or to community outreach? Did we keep these 
you know, these are these kind of universal principles for sustainability. What's our value added? And this is, I think, just a modest tool for helping us think about it. Because otherwise, we're standing there suggesting a project because we think it's a good project. Why, why do we as a sustainability committee think a project is a good project or better than an alternative project? And I'd also like to see um, perhaps, and I'm just kind of brainstorming about state of the city, that if we said this is what we've used, we could look at a city project that's done that ranks kind of high in all of these and say people are already maybe intuitively doing this, but this just uh, would help everybody know these are the things that we all have to look at, whether it's in our home or whether it's in the business or whether it's in the city. And these are useful things to keep in mind. And there's lots of, so we're just keeping active, uh, I think, the context and setting in which we're framing our vision of how we're shaping the future. And this is intended to be very flexible and very fluid because a lot of the projects that are in the CIP are things like re replacing vehicles or um, utility work. And then you wouldn't, you really wouldn't apply that to this unless someone said, well, you're putting all the sidewalks in particular neighborhoods and ignoring other neighborhoods, then that, that, that might come into play. But just for a uh, a normal work program uh, for a lot of the CIP projects, this really wouldn't be useful, but it would be useful for some. Yeah. Positively make a case for why I do a particular thing, particularly cap sorts of things. Does the key also include negative values? I wonder if there is an example that would have yeah. strong environmental benefit, but actually economic um it's a good point. Maybe we should have a scale that goes zero to minus three to plus three. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd be insulting people probably when you're saying your 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 project is bad for the environment. But that's a good point. It'd be nice to have a description too of like what each score measures to, or even just examples yeah. of like a one could be this, or a one would be like so many greenhouse gas emissions reduced or so much money saved for economic yeah. benefits. Well, I think one thing is to look at this as a kind of a starting point that could be mm -hmm. changed and adapted. It's not uh, like a formal motion or anything mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, we did vote on the, those guidelines, so those are final from the committee. And in a lot of ways, those are two pages worth of explanation of what the approach is here. Yeah, I, I think an approach like this is is great and makes it a lot easier for us as a committee to then come forward and say, here's the top projects that you know we really feel support for because of these reasons, and here's the ones we have concern, um, and have a bit of like a list that we went through rather than it being just targeted project by project. Um, the other thing I want to flag is one option uh, to add here would be uh, if it triggers the uh, green buildings and infrastructure policy that we had passed, um, because that has a requirement in the CIP um, that those are indicated. Uh, so it would be a, a kind of additional easy check that ties back to some of our work. Yeah, so just like there's a check to the uh, cap to the greenhouse building, so it could be a, uh, a check there as well. And this this is, is something that would be useful for the, the cap projects that might go into the CIP, but probably not the majority of the other projects that are not going to be ones that the sustainability committee is going to weigh in on where the where the water utility or what the sequence is for replacing police cars. Yeah, but the we might have, um, you know, though we're not through the cap policy, we're not uh, being brought in if it impacts one of the other policies that we, you know, passed through, then we can. So even if a building project or 
a paving project didn't come through to the CIP because of the cap, it's still, if it, especially if the policy applies to it, I, we still, I think, have ground to, to speak on, you know, the sustainability committee's opinion on it reaching those policy measures. And when it comes to translating CAP projects into CIP projects, I think that the CAP maybe is a starting point and there may be some uh, proposals like, uh, and I of course think about the transportation ones and they, they usually don't deal specifically with equity, but they would really need to when they go into the CIP to consider uh, equity and distribution of benefits geographically. The, the CAP doesn't go into that level of detail. Anyone else have any other comments on this tool? If not, it might make sense just to go right into the CAP, CIP portion of the meeting. Any familiar with both those acronyms? Climate Action Plan. That, that's, yes. So, and then the CIP is the Capital Improvement Plan. It's a six year plan, essentially a projection, which the city council approves after the uh, sustainability planning department, planning board, and also puts input into um, what our big ticket items we should anticipate bonding over the next six years are. And we as this committee. So the way how this committee is tied in, when the ordinance was passed, making this an actual committee, one of our um, orders was to advise the city on implementing the climate action plan and everything in the climate action plan is just in the climate action plan and nowhere else unless if it transfers over to things like the CIP. That makes sense. I think so. So picture like a big thick book with a bunch of projects that the city is considering doing over the next six years and they all have fiscal year assigned to them and 10% um, to plan something, then two years later would be the actual amount and the sources of funding. And the finance department spends lots of time um, just with the CIP because the city council needs to bond certain amounts of money every year to actually make those things happen. And we don't want to bond too much money or too little money and we don't want to spend too much money because the taxes go up too much is that a fair way to describe that i would uh, yeah i think so the only thing i'd add is it's it's not the budget document so it's the it's sort of the mm -hmm. background to the budget for the capital things that are going to go into the budget so when the council says we're happy with the cip we like the items in here then they usually take those and put them into the budget but that whole process of deciding what goes into the CIP is a little more of a vetting than the budget has because the budget is the document they need to approve to, to bond these things and spend the capital money and get the grants and all the things that are identified. And to give you an idea what a capital improvement would be, was it anything over 100,000? 50. 50,000? 50, 50, oh, yeah, 50. No, something like an average vehicle won't be in it, but a fire truck would be because it costs a lot of money. Um, sorry, I can we backpedal for one sure. second? And my question is just as far as wrapping up and any actions for that document, are we just going to kind of trial it as a committee for now? Or is this something that we're going to try to vote collectively on as far as usage in the future, just so I can kind of wrap up the notes about what happens next with that document. Well, it's it's open to discussion, but I personally would be fine just having it there for the moment, especially, okay. I don't know if it really needs to be formally voted on. It's a it's a tool we formally voted on the guidelines. And this, we, we, we heard some, um, suggestions of ways of improving this. So maybe I'll I'll add those, you know, maybe Rian, maybe we can play around with a negative and positive scale. Because let's let's say if we built a super highway through the center of town, that would 
be negative in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. So just giving it a one wouldn't be that great. Cohesion. Yeah, or social cohesion. Yeah. So I think that's a good point. So maybe just just as a tool for now, and I, I, I think I did this particularly because I knew we were focusing on the quickly getting some CIP ideas forward. So Josh and Peter, probably a lot of the cap, well, some of the cap recommendations would not go into the CIP if they're smaller ones, like doing a, a small feasibility study or something like that would be funded through the rest of the budget. So the, I think the 50,000 is a guideline for physical things, for reports and studies that usually can go a little lower. So it's 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 a guideline more than a, yeah. a cutoff. No, I was mean, just thinking, again, because I looked at the transport, the, the decarbonizing transportation projects in the cap, and none of those are under 50,000. They tend to be multi-year, yeah. like 15-year projects for a million dollars or something like that. Right. So those are fair game. Yeah, and the six-year time horizon means you can say in the CIP, you can say in the first year, like, like Josh said, you're going to spend 10% of the funds on a design, and then in future years, you're going to build the project. It might take a couple of years even of funding. So it, it could be spread out over that and, whole And all of those are bonded or one. some of those paid Some for... are bonded, some come right out of the general fund, some get federal or state grants. So if it's a five-year period for $500,000... It could be funded out of the general fund. It could be, depending on the action, I think, is yeah. when they decide to bond and not bond. And I, I, I'm not very good at explaining that one. <laughs> yeah. So where we left off at the last meeting was to review the CIP projects and see which ones we should annotate as relating to accomplished CAP goals. Since then, the City Council voted uh, Monday night unanimously to allow climate action plan related capital improvement plan additions by the sustainability committee to be submitted past the current deadline. So what that means is there was a deadline for everyone to submit their capital improvement plan suggestions to the city. That deadline has since passed, but as a policy board, the city council essentially waived that deadline for this committee. So instead of just um, saying, hey, this one item in the CIP already relates to this item in the cap, now it's we could actually take things out of the cap and put them in the CIP. We should recommend they're in the CIP and then staff would put them in there and finance would say, hey, this will blow the budget for the CIP by this much. And the city council would take things out. So that's where things now stand. And I'm not sure if the best, I know you printed a couple things out, Kate. I'm not sure what they were. Okay. Can I just add a little yes. bit? Because I talked to the, the deputy city manager um, about that because they didn't put a deadline, an actual date yeah, on the deadline. I was yeah. like, oh, does that mean? And nice. How, how she interpreted it was that the deadline for the citizens was Friday. And we asked all committees to meet that deadline. And she interpreted it as that the deadline would be extended to the deadline for staff, which is tomorrow. Um, and I think if this committee wants to put together something, we can we can get it written up yeah. by tomorrow. So it shouldn't be a problem. But hopefully we can at least try to try to meet that mm -hmm. deadline, even though the council didn't yeah, put we, a deadline on it. I, it would be nice if we Cook and I intentionally left it open ended because we weren't sure yeah. if it would be able to get done at this meeting. But ideally, we would be able to make some suggestions to both Peter and Kate, and then they would be able to help get it in the CIP this year, opposed to future years. And the um, the alternative would have been, since the cap just passed, wait an entire year before actually adding new items to it, which kind of defeats the purpose for a year. So I got something to add to that, yes. too, and which is... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I guess, part of the evolving understanding of how we're going to do this. But I think our understanding all along was that we'd get the CIP in place and we'd, I mean, the cap in place and come up with CIP items that could go in. And so Kate and I actually went through the cap and picked two items for the planning department, planning and sustainability department to put into the, into the CIP, um, which we can go over and we can, those are, those are going in as uh, department recommendations. Okay. And in the future, we could have that be something that we do as a committee, and then the department brings them forward. 
And what we just we thought made the most sense, um, and obviously the committee should do what they want to do, but we thought it made the most sense to do it every year to make sure we at least put one CIP item in for the community and one for the municipality, because it's how kind of how we split up the the cap. Um, so we came up with two, one for each um, that we thought would be good to advance. We can go over those, but um, but also, I think, given the fact that we're we're already doing that, the committee could decide to put more in as well and see where the council wants to take it, or we could decide to put just those two in, or however the. Let's start with those two. Okay, go from there. So, do you have the? I don't have the number from the cap. I have the description. Or you you might have the whole thing. I still have my old notes. So the, the first one was the, the building um building audit implementation. Okay. And I think it was the first one of the PE one or BE ten. So the, the public works department is doing an audit of all the municipal buildings. I'm looking at all the features in it. And our thought was let's put money in to implement some of the efficiency measures that they come up with in that audit. So there's money in place when they're done with the audit to go do the work. And so we put in um, uh, 50,000, 500,000 for FY26, because it's expensive to upgrade buildings. So 500,000 for FY26 and 500,000 for FY27, thinking we'd have kind of two years of, of upgrades to municipal buildings from the audit. And I think that makes a lot of sense, especially because buildings are one of the largest sources of greenhouse gases that the city controls. Right. So. Do we have any, um, are there specifications behind what that money can be used for? Like, is it just systems upgrades or is it just kind of whatever is determined as needed and how do they prioritize, I guess? That's a good question. I think um, we'll have to be artful in the language to try to guide them, guide them to efficiency measures that satisfy things we're looking for in the cap. So, you know, either electrification or reduction of greenhouse gas emissions or something like that. But um, we yeah. also don't want to tie their hands too much because the reality is like these renovations rarely come alone. There might be other things. And I, I'm not against, uh, you know, allowing if they have to, you know, tear out a ceiling for duct work and the decision in the moment is to do it properly and replace it. Like, I, I, I don't want to make it too restrictive for the actual project, um, but I think the language there for how they prioritize which projects that funding goes towards is probably the best place to add language. Yeah, we could add language along the lines of um, prioritizing measures that re uh, would have an impact on greenhouse gas emissions, reducing greenhouse gas emissions or something like that, but that wouldn't necessarily tie their hands. Mm -hmm. The city's very good at doing multiple things at the same time, just one project, versus going back year after year to reopen up the same street. Right. Right. So just time. Yeah, and I, we, I think we just want to encourage them to continue to do that. Um, I think a lot of times in like energy efficiency language, it can be a little too restrictive for reality and it makes it hard to actually implement um, for them. So I think that's a great, that would be a great thing. Um, along those lines, I, I we probably should, we got to send out an announcement to the committee. I was hoping that, um, I get something from Joe Alameda, but he's he's working with this committee, the group that's doing the audits, and they're presenting to the Portsmouth Energy Advisory Committee on Tuesday night. So um, this committee is obviously invited, but we want to send out an invitation, um, which we'll which we'll follow up with. But just so everybody's aware that that you'll hear more about the audit if you tune into that meeting or go to that meeting or watch it online later. Um, and get some info about what they're doing in the audit process on the buildings. Something about these committees meeting on the dates, nights. Is... Sorry? Uh -oh. so um, recently, this committee has been meeting a lot on the nights of debates. 
debates. Oh, yeah, I think there's a that's true. Also, the community conversations Tuesday or yeah. this Tuesday. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, we got to go to that. Oh, shoot. Oh, gotta come. <laughs> no, but it's earlier. Right? What time's the community conversation? Six thirty to eight. eight. Oh, we're all going to that, aren't we? Oh man, definitely not going to be. Huh. And so just to be it. clear, they already have money for the audit, and what you are suggesting is for money towards implementing whatever they determine from that audit. Correct. Okay. Just. Maybe relating back to that Excel spreadsheet with the criteria, let's say that project that you proposed would be evaluated using the existing criteria and it would get uh, an advantage on the criterion identified in planning document or study. So that would be the, the cap. There isn't an existing criterion on greenhouse gas reduction, for example. So that would so where, let's say, in the future, introducing a GHG criterion might be useful to help in giving that particular project a, a boost. Yeah, I would think if it's in the cap, though, if the document, the planning document is the cap, it's going to Then you be, can assume it's, it's good for greenhouse like gases. Yeah. Not completely, though, because there's a lot of things in there that are so. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions on the specific item? What's the second? What's the second project? Right, let me just mention this uh, as a comment, not a question. Since I've been thinking about acceleration, I just like to say, as mechanical as it is, you and Kate getting us in to get five hundred thousand to implement rather than wait another whole year is a great sense. Mm -hmm of what acceleration means and when we want to do stuff now. So I just appreciate the work that this is bringing up and where it's going. So uh, just want to say that. Thank you. And the second project. So the second project doesn't exactly line up with the written, any written strategies, but it's in the renewable energy section is um, doing a feasibility study or really a solar study across the city for all private residences and, and um, just any basically non-municipal land that could um, potentially have either solar, community solar, solar farms, rooftop solar, any sort of solar oh, I, install. I was thinking of it a little differently. Okay. I was thinking of it as looking at all the existing solar in the city, the inventory part was all the existing solar and then come up with um, incentives or not incentives, but incent incentives that homeowners could use and businesses could use to install solar on their properties. Not looking at where solar could be installed elsewhere. It's because it was a, because it wasn't a community measure. It was a, I mean, it was a community measure. So people in the community could install solar, solar on their homes using these incentives. And then in addition to that, it was, I, it was in line with this one because of the battery backup too, is that looking at where people couldn't install solar because of their situation, whether it's, you know, where they lived or the trees around their house or apartments or whatever the situation was, that they couldn't install solar. What kind of battery backup could be incorporated with solar installations that could be used to do more community sort of solar opportunities. So it's, it's uh, sort of taking solar to the next level with, Community solar a little bit. And when you say incentive, you like, mean like rebates? Or? Yeah, what's available for tax credits, rebates, any other so opportunities the, people could take advantage of to help the them? And city stuff. setting up a fund. So what I was thinking was the city would hire a contractor, and probably with our help, inventory everything that's out there, okay. and then um, <clears throat> when they have that, they could talk about how much solar is in place, which would be useful information and then do public outreach to tell people they should install solar on their homes, or if they want to install solar on their homes, this is how they could do it. And this is how they could receive funding and rebates to do it in addition to their own money they put in. Um, so to sort of facilitate the installation of solar. And then to the extent that it's possible, try to develop community solar projects where multiple users could use solar to put batteries in and then use that power for more than you know one home. 
for an apartment building or something like that. That was the thought. I don't know. Now, <clears throat> community power yep. and long range scaling. If um, this would be separate from if the community actually owned our own solar field, our own utility. Is that in the works and is that in thinking? I've heard various things about that. That's, that would be part of Portsmouth Community Power and be and it would be like a, um, just like you pay for energy offsets, it would be something that goes into the power that's provided to the community. And the way that the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire is trying to set it up is that they'll make enough revenue that they can put in, that communities will have access to funds in their own community to build facilities that could distribute power into their grid so that ports of the community power users aren't just buying recs for the community for their offsets they're actually generating the energy locally but that's that's in the that's in the plan for ports of the community power and the community power coalition hampshire largely and that doesn't relate at all to our our cip do we need to do anything nope. to that's all that's all that's in the works and that's good that comes from yeah user fees this okay. and this is doesn't relate to that either this is more about individual solar on people's homes and trying to expand beyond people that can put in solar to people that might get benefits from it if there's solar in their neighborhood or in their apartment building or in a bigger you know commercial space so, but, you know individuals do it so out in the community i live on a dead end street there's five houses one has solar on it and a lot more roofs. So if we did a uh, a community, what do they call them? Uh, network so solar little, garden or whatever they call solar it. Solar fields. Yeah. yeah. So this could incentivize that. I think that's the thought. That's my thought is that if we can hire the right firm, they can provide information about how that can be accomplished. So it's mainly to get information out to educate what is available because some of the private companies are already doing that thing. Right, but, right. So it would be, but it would be a, a city sort of vetted process. So you don't have to, you know, have the solar company come and sell you something. You can look up on this report. Here's what's available in Portsmouth. Here's how you could do it in Portsmouth. And then you go talk to your companies and that kind of thing. I mean, it's not fully... Fully, fully described, yeah, but um, that was the idea. So it goes through the same, probably RFQ, RFP process yeah. to find someone to. Were there any competing other ones in the community that would? Um... Let me ask a question before you go there. Sure. What's the budget ask for that one? $40,000. And so it would essentially be a resource for right. residents. Would it be more effective to tweak it so that it's a feasibility study of all the community solar potential in each neighborhood in the city? And then after the feasibility study is finished, have like a five-year funding plan for getting like one or two community solar installs off the ground? I do like that idea. Better. I like that idea. Uh, it would be probably better. It'd be a lot more expensive. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's it's the only way it happens. It's only going to get more expensive. Putting it forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not fully formed. We could add that to it. We probably have to bump the number up. Try to, I guess I can do by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Will you say that again, Kate, just so I can put it in the notes? And I, I'm still kind of never really fully understood what community solar means other than like a solar farm that the community pulls off like a neighborhood pulls off of yeah but it it's a feasibility study that looks at i don't know how many neighborhoods we technically have like it's way more than six or something like that. six but like ellen park and atlantic heights and like looking at all the neighborhoods and determining if they could do a neighborhood community solar system and that's the feasibility study mm -hmm. Yeah, or just and then implement and then some long-term funding a few years out to do one or two 
of those installs? Maybe we could do it in steps. You know, the first one is, you know, what kind of what what kind of solar is out there now? Mm -hmm. What um, what people could do to put solar on their property and how they would get incentives, and then where. I guess the problem with where solar could be installed is it's so dependent on willingness of the people to install it. So just looking at roofs isn't going to tell you. I mean, I'll tell you where I guess where it's possible. I think just knowing where it's possible would help. Like, oh, here's an area. It's a large piece of land. There's many, and this could potentially use for this purpose. Then people would start thinking about it versus just. Not but that's. Are you, are you talking about private property? Yes. For the community, solar would be private, private. property. I mean, either. I yeah, I guess. Like, no. Where where would you if you couldn't do stuff on the roof and you wanted the whole neighborhood to be able to plug into it somehow? I don't know how any of that works, but like Ellen Park, maybe Dondero, a section of Dondero could be. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It's not crazy, but that's more community. I yeah. feel like that's a community measure. And I'm trying to, I was trying to get at one that was citizen, just right. encouraging people to put solar on the roof. How do you do that? And I thought if people knew where it was out there and what, what could help them get it instead of, you know, you see stuff all the time about rebates and everything, and, and you don't know what to believe because it's all over the place. So having something that's mm -hmm. kind of a vetted source of here's what's true and here's, here's how it works in Portsmouth and maybe some case studies of people that have done it in Portsmouth um would be a starting point maybe that's followed up with another type of study that looks at the availability and and the, and what's legal i mean can you do a solar net metering project for 10 homes right now in new hampshire i don't i don't know that was the term i was looking for peter net metering i like the practicality of what you're saying <clears throat> and um I'm going to go a little bit up here. We're at 2024. If by 2030, which is a pretty short time, we would like the whole city or 90% of it to be electrified and the, uh, what I was looking at today, we're not only going to need electricity for houses, but for all the other things that are going to be coming online that need to be electrified. And so the person I was listening to today said, we can't just replace the system as it exists. We need to have six times, no, 12 times the capacity to make a climate safe planet by 2050. So I'm kind of going up here and saying, is there something that would allow us to have a vision, even of what, I mean, how many people are thinking of the whole city being electrified by a certain time and what needs to be in place? And do we have anybody, like we could hire somebody $40,000 to get people to do individuals which would be doing something concrete now or and i'm just playing here what if we hire somebody forty thousand to say what are the necessities for us to put in place so that the city is electrified by 2030 what are the things we even need to consider what do we need to what are the possibilities now i know that's way up there but or... well i i guess what i was thinking was I, I think you know there's a lot of talk about getting everything electrified and and research going on on that i guess i was thinking the more renewable energy we do locally the less we need to expand the grid and the generation to support those electrification projects so it was more of a sort of a grassroots way to look at it maybe but um because to get everything electrified means people have to convert from their gas energy and everything has to be electric. But if everybody converts to electric, but there's not an increase in the renewable energy, then the, the grid and everything supplying the energy has to expand to support that. 
So at the same time you get electrification, I think you need to do the renewable. And that's why I was focusing on renewable. Yeah. I would, I would, um, I think the solar battery backup is a, a really important part of that. Um, and that's often the part that from rebates and challenges of homeowners is the hardest part, like for a couple of reasons, one, the cost of them. Um, but if you do a bunch of solar and you don't have enough battery backup, you're still going in and out of the grid, right? So you're reliant on net metering and, and whatever cost you're going to save there. Um, it still puts that pressure on the grid. So I, I feel like uh, maybe not fully focusing, but making sure that that's a proponent of this. And even one of those things is what's required when you have a backup battery in your house. You know, there's a lot of confusion around like fire code on that. Um, so getting some guidance from the inspections and buildings, you know, um, side of it on, do you need to have like a fire rated separated space for your battery? Cause that's, you know, not realistic in most homes in Portsmouth who might be looking at this and, and try to help people on that side a little bit might be, might be, uh, more effective than trying to get more solar panels on the roofs per se. I'd also, I mean, I, I, uh, have we already had conversations about like what the, um, like community power, you know, they're, they're in this all the time, what their kind of ideas would be around how to incentivize this. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. The study would look at what the incentives would be and where the where the efficiencies would be. And so, again, I, community power offers us a hundred percent option of sustainable. Uh, okay, so some of us have done that very small percentage. And I think what you're saying is we're still getting it from other places, but would it be if we could get that percentage of folks to go from what they're doing now up to 100%, would that be a bigger leverage to get us where we want to go? I'm just... And yeah, so... Yeah, I mean it would be it would be easier probably than putting solar panels on your roof to switch to 100 yeah like i'm so yeah. i don't i have a slate roof i prefer yep. to pay the little extra yep so could we have sentence for example put something in the budget that would say um for certain people um under this income we could supplement you for the first three or whatever and, and make make it so that it'd be easier for some people to go 100% and have other people uh, become more aware of what this would do. And would that be really, in the big picture, more effective than a lot of us trying to put the grids? I don't know that. I'm just... Yeah, I don't be overall like the big picture goal of community power is for more renewable energy sources to be brought online and ideally it would happen locally so it would be great if everyone signed up for 100 percent community power because that would mean that more community more renewable energy would have to be generated elsewhere but i think it'd be even better if it was generated here well, that's right. If we had 100%, then we could say, now we're going to get money back and we could put in our own solar field and have our own utility. And then we don't have to have all these individual grids. We could get as the, uh, I'm just, I don't know. And I think that goes back to what, where the debate was, what should this initial amount B should be studying what already exists or what potentially 
exists now. So I think it's important to figure that out first before. Is it more of an inventory or is it a plan? I think Peter's talking about an inventory plus a plan to educate homeowners what's available if they also want to add something. And I think what Kate was talking about, like, hey, here's an inventory of open spaces that's available out there. Oh, that's a fair summary. Is it is it limited to open spaces or is that other things like the available availability of southern facing roofs that don't have yeah by solar. open space I just meant something where you could yeah put an array. Yeah. And it says does does that come in? Could we incentivize? Would it be more powerful to get all the parking lots having solar rays on them? And you know, I mean that could be part of it if it's involving commercial. If it's involving commercial, I think it could, you know, be park, parking lots, but public parking lot, not public, but commercial parking lots could do. But that's not community as we. Well, that would be, that would be community because they're private. So yeah. like a, like a big shopping center could put structure, you know, structure, but uh, solar canopies over their parking lot. And, and then if be... they could have chargers there, that might encourage people to buy more. So. So in the in the life cycle of developing a proposal for the CIP, like the two that you described, if the deadline is tomorrow, is it enough to get to get it in there and on the table? And then there's time to refine it and to talk to the yeah. energy committee and to have a, a, to, to tweak it. Because I, I noticed on the cover page of the CIP, it's not finally voted on at least the last one until March. Next this year, there's some different December. cycles of oh, December. Yeah, go faster, faster. But um, but yeah, the the first piece is just getting getting it in there and the dollar amount so they can plan out the amount of money and then refining the the document. But we don't have that long. And that the work doing that is done within your division with input so from multiple sources. Every of... department can submit their CIP request. My thought was just. Because we have a climate action plan that was just passed, we should put two in from the climate action plan, not knowing the committee wanted to put their own in, but assuming the committee, you know, after the other night, assuming the committee wanted to, and that that was the goal all along. And I think last month we talked about how tonight's meeting was just a few days past the deadline. So just to correct that. Yeah, and we didn't, and last meeting was briefly mentioned that we could have a separate work session, but <laughs> well, I, I think to that point that in future years, it would be better to take more time right. several yeah. months before this process. Well, he has started. a lot of time because we have the cap. And, and we have the cap, yeah. Jester, your hand raised. And I'll be right um, in favor of voting on yours if that's not true. <laughs> Well, I just want to add my two cents because I think that the feasibility study has a lot of pieces and I think they're all valid, but I will say as a homeowner, like I don't want to lose track of what Peter was initially suggesting because I do think that there's a lot of value there for a lot of families who kind of get lost in the weeds and are maybe thinking about it but don't have the bandwidth to sort through what actually can I apply for based on my income and what actually can we do here in Portsmouth and, you know, and what's sort of the bottom line of what am I looking at that it's going to cost me. So if there was somewhere that all that work was already done and they could just reference it and resource it, I do think there's value in that and that it might get some more people on board to say, oh, okay, what this is actually. year were you thinking this would Right away. This right away. Oh yeah, because right away I would agree. It makes sense to this. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, there, there could be other things added in future years, but I, I figured that was a starting point to get information, educate people, but not, you know, not do a lot, not spend a ton of money, but it hits the ground a little bit at least with this idea. Yeah. I mean, I, it seems to me the more renewable energy we can get in place, the better. Especially lately, I know we've gotten several things that like you can have solar for a dollar, you know, maybe not that extreme, but just like, and it looks like it's an official New Hampshire state offering thing. And yeah, yeah. Would Sorry. it be possible um, to make it like a plan and technical assistance? So, so 
to put the RFP out to do like a preliminary review and plan as a basis for some of the like information that gets put out there, but leave a little bit of capacity for somebody who has more of that technical background to do like solar office hours just for community members. Because I, I worry that one, if anything changes <laughs> with legislation or programs or whatever it might be, that a, a plan quickly kind of it might become outdated and that just you know it's still a kind of weedy topic to get into and I wonder if it's more helpful if you have somebody to come ask questions um even if it's just for a limited time in there so maybe it's three three steps inventory plan technical assistance as part of the plan yeah and, and is the inventory necessary maybe the inventory is going to take a lot of energy that isn't necessarily as fruitful as the here's how you do it and here's and here's someone you can talk to about it that has been vetted at least a little bit by the city um so the the effort goes into outreach and communications rather than detailed voluminous data collection yeah maybe there's some case studies on here's here's some examples of solar installations you know a couple homeowners a couple businesses you know around the city how they did it and here's how it can be done today and knowing that this is changing and people have questions you can talk to someone by reaching out here and there's two other items which i would like to consider putting forward one of them peter is essentially what you just said but replace solar for residences with um uh energy efficiency like you know you could hire someone to go by with a heat gun mm -hmm. to see where all the heat's leaking from and they would make recommendations but would it make sense to do the same exact thing you're recommending that way homeowners would be able to go to one spot on the city and say like oh this is where i could go get inventory done and uh resources essentially saying that uh, this is how to go about doing it what's legitimate so like blower tests kind of thing? Is that what you're... Yeah, blower yeah. tests and everything else. Does New Hampshire saves already cover the cost of energy audits for homes? Or I think they might. I think that could be something that could be put... Yeah, that, that would be something that would be tied up yeah. into it, but just yeah. be a low-hanging fruit where if we're on the uh, community side, exploring this for solar, we could also explore the community side for energy efficiency, which the city's going to be doing for the other uh, CAP, CIP item that you for the first municipal. spoke about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So it makes sense to just allow another, you know, go through the RFP, RFQ process, almost identical, but just for energy efficiency when it comes to um, and then other one, which the one that caught my eye, um, numbers, letter combinations, DTS-7, and this is the one, I'll just read it, it says, develop and implement a fleet decarbonization plan with consideration of vehicle electrification and renewable fuels. As applicable, this plan should adequately assess future charging needs by department and vehicle use types install additional level two and direct current fast charging stations as appropriate. And it goes on to say the cost of this strategy may be offset through funds available through the Granite State Clean Fleets Program. And the reason why I think this would be important to get out there early is a lot of people are gonna to want to see the, uh, the city's fleet of vehicles changed over to EVs sooner than later, but instead of doing it willy-nilly, it would make sense to at least have a um, a plan. So the same RFP, RFQ, and have someone come up with the plan for the city, and then in future years, we could actually start putting the vehicles in the CIP for rolling stock. Yeah, that's one of the ones we looked at, too. Yeah, that's I think Effie submitted this one. One of the things that Kate sent out was a, a, a list from Effie and it included five that she got in by December. Okay. 
by September 17th. So I think this was yeah. one of them. And then I had a list that had some transportation and ones. So the, the difference here between what Effie submitted as a residence submission versus what we're doing and what the sustainability and planning department's doing is these will actually be in the plan with all the numbers attached versus a residential one. They're normally in the back okay. and the council could pull it out. So this could be hit both on both Correct. ways. So it could be Effie as a citizen endorsing something that comes from yeah, the committee. Yeah, that's probably where I recently read it. Yeah. I mean, and that strategy does say it takes 15 years is the approximate. Yeah. To complete. So it'd be good to start. Be net zero by 2040. Greater than 5 million? Well, I think that greater than so 5 million is the whole thing. Whole thing. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about 15 years. And the, first step. the first step is actually um, plan. develop the plan. And I think Effie said 15 years is too long. Is that what she said in her email? I don't disagree, but the time to complete doesn't make a difference if we don't start. So, so do we want to look at Effie's recommendations, or she's she's sure. put those in already? And then I've got I've got the ones that that um, Kate sent out as well that are the transportation ones. I mean, besides this one. So Effie did five. Um... So and then she's got more details on those below. Accelerating EV charging plan to add increased EVs, which is DTS2. Work with the school department to electrify the school bus fleet, DTS9. Increase funding for trees and greenery, CSLU5. Throw more utility fleet fee, um, which CBW has been working on for a yeah, while. Sometime. Seed money for green building fund for weatherization and en energy improvements. So that was both BE1 and BE5. Um, that's cute a lot, actually. That could be good. One of them regarding the EV charging infrastructure, it's one thing which I was able to get in two years ago was the half million dollars for EV charging, but it's still in the CIP now. It's just not being, um, I guess not much has been done with it. Is that for Bridge Street or that was for? That was for the whole city. It was to look at and see where, uh, whether it's DC fast chargers or level two charge, whatever it is. But um, it's still currently in the CIP, so it's in there. It's just not being. Is it assigned to a certain fiscal year? I think every year was allocated like one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. It says over a million over six years. Is that hers or that's current? It's in CIP. Yeah, that's yep. what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Has that been spent every year? Do you know? Yeah. Does it let me use it? I don't know. I think it got, has it started yet? It's, does it start? It has already started. Is it a bond? Um, that I don't recall. It was, I don't remember how Ben said he was going to handle it, but it's in there now. And the idea was have a year of studying where the, where they could go. So maybe the recommendation is to move ahead and do it rather than postpone it if you keep going it, there'll be a okay, the element sheet there we go there it is yeah this is what i was able to get in two years ago so scroll down a little bit kate it has the years there you go so yeah so it starts this that's cool so that was it's so they've that says federal, state, and then parking revenue. So it's a split between those two things. So there's federal money that were, was received and parking revenue. So maybe that's from ARPA or some other source, the federal, state, and then the revenues from parking. So every, so they they put that money in 
probably go towards the ones they bought for the Bridge Street lot. So it still goes in the CIP, even though there's no no bonding, no general fund. It's if it, completely if it funded. If into the budget, it gets put into a, it gets approved and that money gets- Even though it's coming from that. those two sources, the federal and the parking. And that $100,000, I don't know if it was obtained from federal or state. I think it may have been wishful. Who was the goal? Yeah, Inspiration. That, yeah, where the number we gave was, I think, a million. 50. And then the city decided, all right, well, 50 of it could be parking, and then the other amount could be Fed State that might have to be changed to uh, bonded or general fund. It's not available. We'd have to look at how it went into the budget, I guess. But that's in place now. So that seems like coming from the committee, there can be um, support for prioritizing things that are already in that haven't moved forward like this one. Yeah, and, and when the draft CIP has a public hearing, people can support projects too there. Including the anyone's committees too? Sure. Yeah. So this committee could speak for speak. this one. Yeah. And if the 100,000 isn't available from federal to encourage other sources? Go back to FP's list. Yeah. Okay. So she started with the building stuff. Anyone? Set the fund for the living conditions when the NHC is not is available. We study a business plan to implement the adoption of tax incentives for multifamily and commercial buildings that are efficient. I think she prioritized the ones that she listed at the top and I think put pluses by them. Pluses by the ones that she did. Oh, so she didn't do BE2. I don't think so. I think probably the pluses are the ones that are listed at the top, or maybe the pluses are the ones that she submitted. I'm just guessing because it doesn't. The start of the new. Oh no, yeah. So the next one will be DTS two. Even and I think she assumed that I was going to do more of the decarbonizing transportation. She was right. Did you submit any individually yourself? No. Okay. So maybe it's just Epi. The next one was increase the usage of e-bikes, e-cargo bikes, adapting e-bikes, covering part of the proof. Purchase cost. Um, and you mentioned that there was going to be one going in by the library, separate from this. Yeah. So she put a lot of somewhere. Money so hopefully by the library. Yep. So that that's going ahead. It's going to go ahead with ARPA money. That's, yeah. So that wouldn't end up in the CIP. It's already yeah. money that we have. We have to spend. E bike charging. School department to electrify the school bus fleet. That's a huge undertaking, but glad to be getting. Yeah, yeah, I think that one would be hard to put into the CIP now, but it would be something that the city and the school department should start working on. Yeah, for next year. They have been trying to work on that, but I think the main hurdle is the STA bus company. That's the regional bus company. They hire through. Does the bus company provide the buses or does the city own the buses the bus and provide, the provide buses. them to the contractors? So the, the city owns the buses. No, the city does not have the contract. It's a contract, which is the huge hurdle. But it's good to at least have some cities that use that contractor push for this. Yeah. I'm sure, they'll do whatever the city wants as long as they're paid. Right. They pay the bills. Um, other one. Solar community support for amending zoning and other city policies to keep barriers to solar. Let me see what she suggested and what she submitted for. I don't know what kind of number she submitted for.
designed and built solar arrays with battery storage, which we already talked about. Uh, the expansion of the sea's tree cover. One five million cited in cap. That's what she put in. Next CIP has 20,000 per year for trees and greenery. Oh, increase to 100,000 annually. And I don't know if either of you would remember this. For the 400, we increased the budget for trees. It may have been to $100,000. Do 400 trees. For 400 trees. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't think that's asking too much, saying, hey, let's increase it from 20,000 to 100,000 every year. Mm -hmm. So more utility fee is going to go on. 100 to 500,000. Yeah. You can say what she put in for it. I mean, remember. And that's still caught up in. Yeah, legal state. Yeah. So, um, that's. No, there. Are... For Effie's. Does anyone want to talk more about any of Effie's suggestions, or should we move on to anyone else's suggestions? All set. <laughs> All set. What the transportation suggestions? Decarbonizing. And I think I just added. I just put in things that added to what. If he had, so I didn't repeat oh, I the somewhere too. EV, EV ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think looking at putting something together quickly, I didn't realize it would be just 24 hours or tomorrow on this, but probably the, the two that I thought could be priorities are uh, one that's maybe adding emphasis, just like we talked about adding emphasis to one of the ones earlier on the bicycle and pedestrian plan. And this the, the, the wording in that first paragraph is right from the, the cap. Um, support the creation of a viable transportation network that reduces dependence on motor vehicles. Uh, the plan's implementation should be conducted consistent with the timeframe. Uh, so re really having the bike plan, the cap and the CIP be consistent. I, I, I think what I was suggesting is adding support from this committee for uh, moving ahead with the items that are already in the, the CIP for the bike and pedestrian, and then expressing support for quickly moving ahead in the next CIP with the recommendations that come out of the okay. bike uh, and pedestrian plan, which will be done in a few months. So it isn't, it isn't adding a specific cost as much as it's supporting the bike pedestrian projects that are already in the CIP and um, going on record from the committee to support rapid implementation of the projects. So this one doesn't have a, a dollar to it, but I think of the ones that are there. Uh, uh, yeah, this one. That are in there right now. That are in the, yeah. I know it that I and Sabre and others recommended quite a few bike pedestrian projects in the CIP that I think are, are in. Bikes. So I think what this would do is add the cap reference and the um, support from the sustainability committee to the bike ped projects that I are in. If you put bicycle and pedestrian. Yeah. Okay, well, I hit, yeah. I just did five. Oh. There it is. Yeah. That's the one right there. 50,000 a year? Yeah. Yeah. So is that For five years? That's probably that's committed because that's coming out of the parking fund. Right? Well, it happens every year. So they have to approve it yeah. every year. So every year it's the slated to be, but it has to get, doesn't get, if it doesn't get pulled out or increased or decreased. Yeah. It could change every year, but 25 was approved, so that was in place. So I think there's what... also a, a 
there's also a greenway. What there's also money already going towards implementing some bicycle yeah. infrastructure stuff. So and a lot of the greenway stuff I think is already done. And the next thing is uh, the maintenance city's share of the maintenance and completing the. There's path. some additional greenway items. Yeah, one they, there was talk about paving part of it. I don't know if that's still happening, but um, there's other things that need to be done, signage and access. And then there's two public access for parking areas that have funding in place already. So I, I think what this committee could do is endorse what's in it now and um, maybe communicate interest in increasing it for the next CIP, depending on what comes out of the, the new bike pedestrian plan. So for this CIP now, what? how would you support it? Do you just write a letter or do you have to submit an application saying? You well, know, they're in there. That. It's in there. So you could go speak at a public hearing. Yeah, it's just to support it and Sabre, Sabre yeah. I'm sure would. Yeah, Sabre would support it too. And we could say the committee, uh, if you go that you've talked to the committee and if we are in agreement, we could say the committee is yeah. behind us. So it's not adding a new project. It's adding support for the existing projects and um, communicating the committee's interest in rapid implementation of what comes out of the bike pedestrian, new bike pedestrian plan when it's completed, like likely increasing the funding. So it's just really the sad. The other one maybe to give attention to is the DTS. Devin. Yeah, that's the one which I'd like to see that. Oh, familiar. Yeah, I've been pushing that one for a long time. That that one comes right out of all the TCAG stuff that we did. Uh, not not the DTS seven, DTS. Oh, sorry, uh, DTS four. That's the feasibility study. Visibility study for uh, bus demand responsive micro transit or shuttle that would be uh, serving Portsmouth within Portsmouth limits and would complement what Coast has in place to offer something uh, easier easier to use that would let you connect from neighborhoods major corridors directly to downtown or to CNJ in major locations. So it would be a, a more flexible service it could be both um um uh, let's say fixed route in the morning that connects to downtown and c and j and then flexible in the evening really where you would reserve it ahead and that would be the micro transit part so it could be a kind of a hybrid type of service that's different than what's offered it's very much a radial service so to get to a lot of different places in portsmouth you have to come into downtown transfer and go out of downtown but this, and that's because it's part of a regional system. But this would be something that would be within the Portsmouth city limits, and it would be designed to connect neighborhoods, particularly housing developments on the major corridors like um, Lafayette Road and uh, Maplewood, target uh, affordable housing and uh, replace, replace car trips, reduce traffic, and um, demand for parking. The, the presentation to the city council on uh, the parking study. Was that, that was this, this week or was that last week? Oh, it's, uh, so, that was this Monday. Monday. That was this Monday. Monday. That was this Monday. Yeah. I mean, they, they were really pointing at the planned development, really saturating and going far beyond the available parking. And we've seen at CNJ that they're now raising the alarm that the parking lots are jammed up and they want to start charging for that. So the idea is that this, that the existing CNJ is not carrying a sizable number of people in Portsmouth, and this would be a new service in addition to Coast. So th this is to do a feasibility study. And I think just like the um, tables that we saw in the CIP, it could likely be funded um, uh, in part or completely by non-city sources. It could be funded through the federal planning grants that go through the Rockingham Planning Commission or New Hampshire DOT, it could be shared. I think the idea is that this would be a service that would also be attractive to um, surf tourism. And if you remember way back last year beyond when we were doing the TCAG 
presentations, we had the examples of places like Savannah and Charleston and uh, Burlington, where the private sector is making substantial contributions to it as well because it's meeting their needs. So it's it's a feasibility study. I think that the 500,000 is more is too much. The 100,000 is probably not quite enough. But I think there's a, a lot of available resources either through the federal planning funds that funnel through Rockingham Planning Commission and the state DOT or some of the dedicated programs that are in the federal um, infrastructure law climate funds for transportation. I should say, so seeing as it's eight o'clock, are there any other items that members would like to see entered into the CIP or should we move on to another i think i think for me it's just those two and i covered really all of the transportation ones but those were the two that seemed limited and practical one is support the existing bike pedestrian projects and the second is this little feasibility study thank you um just if you were to sorry to go back on this if you were to suggest a number because a hundred thousand is you think too low 500 is too much what would be your ideal number? Uh, I would say probably 200 Just for that, for with the assumption that it could come from multiple sources, that it could come from, within Portsmouth, it could come from the parking, parking fund as well. The Rockingham Planning Commission and the state DOT get lots of federal planning money, and they program it. I mean, there's probably a year delay in getting it. It's called the Unified Planning Work Program. Um, and uh, that could fund the study, or it could be split three ways. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility, to, flexibility to it. Also, I would like the idea of having maybe the Chamber of Commerce or its members of the hotels contribute to this because this would support a um, car-free tourism. So you could fly to Logan, take the CNJ bus to CNJ, hop on the shuttle bus because. Very, very few people take coast from CNJ for one good reason, not not the outbound, but the return because it's traffic. I mean, you can take it to catch the bus on schedule, but you don't know when the bus is gonna come back and a flexible schedule. So it could be a hybrid where you have a shuttle fixed route schedule in the morning and a flexible and a lot of the cities that uh, have that will have things like partnerships with Uber and Lyft to CNJ could contribute to it. We want to stay on CIP. I guess we can't vote yeah. on something to support, but it sounds like we have at least, in addition to Peter and I's suggestions, two really strong ones with the uh, Fleet electrification study and ETS4, and then just. Yeah, and hopefully there's enough verbiage there that if we wanted to include that, there's enough there. Yeah. Hey, do you think you're good? Yeah, sorry. Awesome. So do we have, so, uh, do you have, have an action? <laughs> That's my, like, what I think Kate was hinting at it. I know we can't officially vote, but. What's what are we deciding we on to Peter and I's department items? Do we want to just submit on behalf of the sustainability committee through and we will do it? On, are we okay with our department items? I guess we're kind of already, I mean, doing the, those. Well, I want to at least get two in for, through the department, we can adjust them. Do you um, want to put the two but, in and add to it support from the sustainability committee? Does that, that help for those two? and? These other ones can be from the committee. Well, the ones yeah. from the committee would also have to be in by tomorrow. From what yeah. there's the question is, would you be able to add these other two in tomorrow as well? What other two? The one on the fleet electrification. Yeah, the study, study for fleet electrification. And then this DTS4 for a study, uh, micro transit feasibility study. And we would that, that one, yes. Maybe you could say micro transit and um, shuttle. Do we have that form, the sustainability? Yes, yeah, so the form. When I looked at it, it looked 
Are there, do we have everything we need on there? It did look straightforward, but I'm just, I just thought if we look quickly at it. Right, and just get, so this obviously is. Obviously we have all that. This um, is what the finance department put together for us so that if we did have the ones to put in from the committee, we'd make sure we covered all these things. We can fill them in tomorrow, but let's yeah, just see. see if we're missing let's just see right. what. That makes it nice and easy. Uh, title, project location. Yeah, project description. What else is on there? These check boxes, response, yeah. Yeah. Those are the criteria. Mm -hmm. So all of these would check the, that plan one planning document, then find in planning document because of cap. Yeah, and so details. The bike pad is already listed as an example. Yeah. Yeah. So we can. Yeah, it looks like we can. That's it. We can figure. We could fill these out. So the committee, the the. Department will submit the two that we talked about with maybe some modifications that we talked yeah. about. And then the committee will submit the fleet electrification and the DTS for the transportation one. DTS four and DTS. And seven. we'll fill out that form for the committee. Thank and you. And put those in for yeah. Can I and that I it might be too much, but and I appreciate and understand the value of doing studies to understand what it's gonna look like, but I feel like that's what we're suggesting a fair amount of money be spent on like josh mentioned it effie mentioned just increasing how much money we're putting into putting trees in the city that yeah, seems like actually doing is can we add that on as a bonus or something like that just seems like an easy and taking action now especially right now like with all the infrastructure work they are chopping trees down all over the place why like, i didn't bring that one up is that's a simple me making a motion when the council's debating and saying, "Hey, let's increase this from twenty thousand a year to a hundred thousand a year," versus if we didn't have an actual, I don't know, like data sheet on something new, we wouldn't be able to take action on it as a council. So I'm in full support, and I'm planning on increasing it. I don't know if it would make sense just to increase it off the bat. We could do that. Did you guys? You mean like, add another sheet? Well, not another sheet, but just change what's currently on the sheet. If it's currently twenty thousand a year for trees, to increase it to a higher figure. That's in the CIP. That's in. The that's CIP. something you can do as a yeah, counselor. Yeah, that's what I'm but, saying. That's oh, yeah. I could do as a counselor. Yeah, easily. S similarly, the same thing could happen on the bike pedestrian projects, except I don't have in mind what the specific ones Correct. are. But I'm no sure savers. Going to be sending in specific ones that will clearly end up as priorities in the new plan as well. But I, I think it's probably but this too much of a stretch for us to say just add more money without saying where. Whereas the trees are straightforward. It does. I yeah. just, when you do that, is this committee comfortable? And I don't know if you, it would be worthwhile for you to say the sustain, sustainability committee also supports this action or something just to. And maybe that's, you know, neither here nor there. But yeah, I, that seems sort of like one of those low hanging fruit things. Let's just start investing in putting more trees around the city. <laughs> and that's something that the community can see. And that, yeah, as compared to all these studies that are a little bit more sort of out there. Yeah. Well, the, the studies set the stage for scale i i appreciate the value i'm just yeah. saying you know that's but that's something. that's why something like the dts4 said greenhouse gas reduction from doing the study zero right immediately you can't hug a study right you can't hug a study but you <laughs> exactly. you could the committee can put in as get I people think, out of their I, cars I think you could put in a third one i mean it, you know if, if that's the vote or the or the consensus i guess were there was there any other ones Easy ones that you saw that you want to see. Um, I to be honest, I'm not sure. I feel like there was just so much sorting through, but just as we were narrowing, um, that just seemed like an easy, you know. And I think the expectation is sort of already. I mean, I know that Max gets every year he hands out trees; they're all gone. So I think that's something that this community is invested in anyway. So it seemed like an easy. I agree.
All right, so the plan is that the sustainability department is going to submit your two that you came up with some uh, with some modifications. The sustainability committee is going to submit the feasibility for the EV fleet and the DTS four one, and that Josh is just going to recommend that we increase the money we spend on yeah, increase. That sounds quite practical and not a ridiculously heavy lift, like the sustainability committee is coming in with a whole new CIP. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Committing to additional work. Thank you for getting an extra day, Josh. The um, All right, so there's a couple more items on the agenda with 15 minutes to go. The... Um, Rules and draft procedures. Should we talk about it tonight, or since we can't vote on it, should we push to the next meeting? Yeah, I think that's a good reason to table it. Also, it's um, actually being reviewed by legal, so by the time we have our next meeting, we might have an even more refined version to talk about. So. And then the sustainability committee website review. We might need a vote for that. That um, was Effie had finalized the content. We talked about it last month and kind of I think everybody had some input and she put in some of our staff input for just grammar stuff for um maybe formatting the same but I don't know if it needs a vote actually but maybe it does next month to officially vote on the content but um, we can do that next month when Effie's here too I don't know if the planning board votes on what's on there I don't think they have to vote necessarily, but if there's changes or things that people caught, if they want to give, I mean, you can always give input on the web page, really. We can always edit it later or yeah, change. Yeah, it's helpful to have the updates. I think it got a lot of good feedback last month. So. Yeah, I yeah. think it's good. Good to post. Good to post as far as any objections. Okay, unofficial vote. Sweet. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it was very simple. It just took a lot of verbiage that we already had in our guidelines and our ordinance. So great links to all the new stuff we're working on. I see the guidelines, that's nice. Building policy, upcoming meetings, listing out everybody who's on the committee. What? I was wondering what that picture at the bottom is. Oh. Just it's a, a video recording. Yes. Oh, it's a placeholder. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, okay. planning board. <laughs> I was like, that's not a, that's not the committee. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We will work on getting that on the website. That was easy. Then for updates, um, do you guys have updates on the bike pedestrian? Y yeah, just that the public meeting is September 30th. So Monday. Monday. Okay. You know when? Mm -hmm. I think it's six, I think, in the Levinson room. Yes, right. six p.m. in the Levinson. Yeah, and it's um, I'm on the advisory committee, and I think we're helping, but it's it's going to be, I think, stations that people will go around to and probably look at some um, inventory and uh, early input they that, that the consultant has received. But this will be one of the major public engagement activities for the public plan. I think for the bike pedestrian plan, I think they've had a lot of responses on the survey, so they'll probably present some of the results of that. My contributions have been in addition to say, put put one here, put one there, to say uh, align it with the, ca with the cap. <laughs> Would either Jess or Bo like to give an update on community engagement you want it to do the next one? Sure. Uh, the next one is Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, the day after. It's about adaptation and resilience. Kate and Peter will be there. I will not. Um, it is usual 6.30 to 8 in the Levinson room. There it sounds like there are going to be some very good speakers from some other organizations. Um, one of the things that we've been discussing on the sideline, which would be worth discussing with Peter and Kate, is trying to find a way to get them um, hybrid or Zoom moving forward. That seems like a tricky thing in the Levinson room. So just 
navigating that we've been told that they have an owl camera in there but it doesn't work very well for conversations and trying to keep up with people moving but we had also heard that the city has um wired that room so that when there's public meetings and special meetings that it can also be broadcast so we didn't know if there was a way that we could tap into that moving forward to get larger audiences so it's too late for Monday, but maybe for the next one, which is right. December 5th. So there's a fair amount of time for that one. Yeah. And I think the library supports it. Yep. It's just figuring out who we need to talk to and if it's viable and what, how it actually works. And does I it just get need a producer to, to support it? Yeah. And does it just get broadcast or can there actually be like a Zoom people or component so that people could? you know, right. participate if, in some level. To, broad, to broadcast and hybrid, I think you need a producer. And it sounds like, the, are they always the same night as peak? No, th this one just wound up being a Tuesday. They're usually Wednesdays, but okay. this one was Tuesday because of okay. other library events yeah. already going on. That yeah. might be the problem with this one. Got it. I don't know. The problems, but I yeah. can look into that. I don't know. I, I've, I've heard mixed things about I meetings from that room. I don't know if it's the hybrid or the broadcast or what, but I mean, hybrid, anybody could do on their computer with Zoom, but getting people in the room to see it, I think is the problem. Right. With that. I don't know how that works there. Yeah, so. we've done Zoom budget, all day budget meetings there where it was some people Someone's zoomed in, Zoom. in. I think I zoomed into the last mm -hmm. one. Okay. But it wasn't a free-for-all. It's just like a set number of participants. Right. It's possible. And were you able to see everybody and engage effectively? I'm guessing that. Yeah, I was able to watch everything on my screen at home. Mm -hmm. That's what engaged effectively. <laughs> Which is really all people expect at this point. Right. Just to be able to do that would be quite positive. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. So for the next, the next one is the community conversation community climate conversation on transportation. And it's a, a second one. We did one as input to the CAP. So the focus on this is going to be on CAP implementation, specifically the DTS projects, the nine projects. And we'll probably focus, well, we know we'll focus on the public transit and bike pedestrian ones. Uh, it will be a um, introduction that all do and hopefully an update on the cap from Peter or from Kate. So December, it's December 5th, which is a, uh, I think a Thursday. And then we have a really good panel uh, with Rad Nichols, the coast uh, executive director and Matt Glenn, the Sabre president and Scott Bogle, who's the lead transportation planner for the Rockingham planning commission. And it's a panel that we've put together other times we did it for Portsmouth Smart Growth probably 10 years ago. So everyone's quite familiar with each other. But uh, the, the focus is going to be on CAP implementation, linkages of some of the ideas to um, uh, the Route 1 project, the bike ped pedestrian project, the Market Square. Um, so really trying to do a better job of connecting ideas across multiple different uh, planning initiatives and really talking about what it really takes to get uh, people on to, uh, to decarbonize their transportation, to get them out of their cars into public transit, including maybe the micro transit shuttle idea, existing post buses, um, and uh, prioritizing corridors that serve ha future housing developments, particularly affordable housing. So it's, it's really cap plus co-benefits and uh, ideally a lot of audience participation. So panel facilitated panel discussion and audience participation were the uh, best, best ideas for uh, moving toward a more sustainable transportation system in Portsmouth because we're really a driving, a driving city. Thank you. And related to that, I was talking to Bert about a motion that I guess we couldn't pass since we don't have enough to to vote on it 
where the sustainability committee would be a um, co-host or collaborator on these climate community conversations. I think you, you've been implicitly, this committee has been implicitly that. And I noticed that on the button up uh, workshop that's coming up the end later in October, that it's um, co -host, I guess the words are co-hosted by the sustainability committee, the city energy committee, and a couple of others. So why not have the sustainability committee be listed with Seacoast Climate Action now and Portsmouth Climate Action and the library? And the library is a co-host now of all the community conversations. So, you know, maybe rather than having the committee be co-host for all of them for eternity to have the committee consider them one at a time see what the interest is in co-hosting. So I wonder what the thinking is about that. That's, I think that's fine. I don't know that you have to, I guess you could vote. You can't vote. Next right month. I think we'll bring it up at the next meeting. We yeah. have the notes that maybe yeah. that we are, uh, can figure out what we want to do. Question I had, now that we're a standing committee, if we were co-host, um, can we put the city um, seal? Seal. As I remember on a letter that we put out, to, it was good to have you. So we'll talk about that next. So this next, the December 5th, is going to have the logos Coast and Sabre and Rockingham Planning Commission on the publicity for it. We'll have their logos as speakers, but the sponsors or hosts of it are. Seacoast Climate Action now, Portsmouth Climate Action, and the library. So that it would be adding the Sustainability Committee as one more co-host. Good. And that way we're sort of more clearly linked up to the CAP, supporting the CAP implementation. Bert, do you have anything you'd like to add in general? Yeah. Really, I'm just looking at uh, we uh, our rotation. I was looking at all of the members, and we have talked about um, just getting a feel for what people's commitment are is to the committee, what the expectations are, and um, I'm thinking that. At this point, I'm going to, I thought, uh, well, let me tell you, Jess, I didn't get in contact with the Eco Club, hoping that when students, they might have carried over. Are you planning to have any contact with them between now? I did already. Um, on behalf of this committee, as well as Seacoast CAN, because that's also part of our tenant, is to have students on that board as well. And... Um, I spoke to Hannah, who is the educator sponsor. Yeah, whatever. I can't think of the right term. And she said she would talk to them and figure out who might be interested and look at schedules and things. But I have yet to hear back from her. So I will follow up and see if she's. You do that. That'd be great because mm -hmm. I didn't want to. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then. Uh, we did say at one point, and this is, I don't know in the rules, if somebody isn't here for three meetings, we were going to contact. Uh, we have to figure out how we, we make the committee as functional as possible. And when somebody gets on the committee, what that means and define that. So will that be in the rules that we have? I think that's spelled out as three absence, unexcused absences. So we'll look at that next week, next month, to really lock that down. Now we need to get who's going to facilitate next meeting and take notes for next meeting if we. Um, are there any volunteers? I would volunteer, except I'm going to be in Minneapolis and may be able to join remotely. But 
I'd be happy to do it at the meeting meeting after that. All right. And Jess seems like you're doing a lot of this. <laughs> and you facilitate the last meeting and you're taking notes of this meeting? I did, yes. Yeah, that's the opposite order. <laughs> I'm happy to facilitate my notes taking it the 24 hour process for me. Um, yeah, obviously, you want to facilitate that'd be great. Any volunteers to take notes? If not, I can take notes again. I think I took my right. last meeting. What is that? The last I, meeting? Yeah, I did the last meeting, but I could do it again. Do we got it? Yeah. Awesome. Well, with that, I'm going to officially end this meeting and then.